On page 74, we have uh, premature ventricular complexes in various patterns. So let's start with this first one here. So here we have um, uh, multiform premature ventricular complexes. So we have one PVC here that looks slightly different from this one, although, although the morphology isn't dramatically different. Uh, this one is clearly from a different focus, completely different shape. And then again, we have uh, this one here that looks very similar to the first, and this one that looks very similar to the second. So um, multiform is the term used to describe um, PVCs of different morphology. Um, however, a lot of emergency personnel use the term multifocal, which is probably perfectly fine. Uh, electrophysiologists are not crazy about the word multifocal because if you go into an electrophysiology lab and map out the heart, um, what an electrophysiologist may tell you is that um, if there's a, a PVC, let's see uh, here, um, originating from this focus, on one occasion the, uh, the initial wave of depolarization may be in this direction, and on the second occasion, the initial wave of depolarization from the same focus might be in this direction, giving rise to two different shape premature ventricular complexes, but from the same focus, hence the term um, multiform PVCs. Really, it's a bit of semantics. It doesn't matter that much. The thing that's more concerning about this particular ECG is look at the heart rate. Um, here's a QRS that falls in the dark line. Here's uh, the heart rate here is uh, 300, 150. It's about 180. So the big question is, why is this patient so tachycardic? And these PVCs are generally a symptom of cardiac irritability, which is the result of uh, some underlying cause. So the question is, why is the patient tachycardic? Is this a supraventricular tachycardia? Is this a volume depletion with a reflex tachycardia? Is it an electrolyte imbalance? Uh, an AV nodal reentry, a pre-excitation syndrome, is it one of those things? So the, the issue to address here is not the premature ventricular complexes, it's uh, whatever is causing this underlying heart rate. That's the concern with this particular one. Um, here's uh, some PVCs in a bigeminal pattern where we have a normal beat PVC, normal beat PVC, normal beat PVC. Now, a couple of interesting things about this one. Um, one of the questions you know people sometimes ask is uh, what is are these PVCs being perfused? Is there a pulse with those? Well, uh, the gold standard is you check for a pulse, and if there's a pulse with uh, with this beat and with this beat, then yes, we know the PVCs are perfusing. But uh, just looking at the cardiogram, uh, one of the things you can do is you look at the distance between the underlying beat and the premature ventricular complex, and if the distance between those two is equivalent to in this case, it's about 100 beats per minute or less, well, you know that the ventricle has had sufficient time to, uh, to fill uh, to have enough stroke volume to produce a pulse with that. So just as a guess, I would say these PVCs are probably perfusing. The second thing that's interesting about this for discussion's sake is, you know, people sometimes ask, well, uh, what would happen if you eliminated these premature ventricular complexes by administering an antiarrhythmic? Well, um, you would not get, contrary to what some perceive, uh, a bradycardic rhythm because what happens is the premature ventricular complex resets the heart rate. So in the absence of those PVCs, the heart rate would be equal to um, two cycles here. So there'd be a cycle somewhere in here and the heart rate's probably about 60, maybe slightly less than 60. Uh, but eliminating these P PVCs would not result in a bradycardia contrary to, uh, to popular belief. And again, do we treat PVCs? Generally not. We treat the underlying cause. PVCs are generally a symptom rather than a cause of a problem. The only time we might treat PVCs is if they're happening with such frequency and from uh, multiple locations that they're causing some degree of hemodynamic uh, compromise. Here we have a trigeminal rhythm where we have normal beat, normal beat, PVC. Here we have a quadrigeminal rhythm where we have uh, three normal beats followed by a PVC. And lastly, uh, we have uh, some couplets. And this is when you get two ventricular beats that happen side by side. And uh, this is a bit of a concern. You start to wonder if the cardiac uh, tissue is a little more irritable than normal. The other concern is that the second ectopic beat falls on the repolarization phase of the first one, and that would be R on T phenomena. And that can lead to short runs of ETAC or other dysrhythmias.